paranormal Karen. She's so spooky, paranormal Karen. Funny too, paranormal Karen. She's so spooky. Oh, and did I mention she's funny too? Yeah, cha cha cha. Hey everybody, welcome to the podcast. It's already off the rails. The podcast already, the cart, the the horses are off the cart or the wheels. What's happening? I don't know. Hey, I have that same cup. I'm here with... It's uh, green. It's, it's green. a green cup. It's a green cup, just so they know. It's a green plastic cup. Yeah. It's, was, was, Thick plastic. It's, it's got like a quarter inch? Quarter inch plastic. I don't know. It's very Eighth heavy. Inch. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Durable. <laughs> Durable, although I yeah. have knocked it over. Uh, I am here with, uh, I don't even know how to do this intro. So funny, Ryan Singer. Um, he, me and Ryan Singer, I think we are the, I shouldn't brag because somebody's going to get mad, but we are the paranormal ghost hunting comedians and Mike Brody. And I don't know too many more. I know a lot of people that do podcasts and stuff, but we're in there the are a lot of comedians that are like really interested in paranormal stuff. Um, are they out doing? No, you know, I don't know. There's probably like a lot of younger comedians that we don't know, right? Who are in fact maybe you know are for sure who will going on a... going on quote unquote hunts or whatever. Um, and I know I have some friends who have done some other investigations that are like in comedy. Um, I don't know how active they are in right. continuing to do them, but but yeah, I guess like. You know, people show up at, like, for you and I, I think people will do, like, oh, there's, like, a paranormal team that came to the show. Right. Now we're doing an investigation after the show. Yeah, yeah. Um, like, whether at, whether it's at that club or somewhere in that in the, the city or where and, that we And are. remember, I was trying to uh, get us a TV show. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> so no one does it but me and you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, but there's, yeah, no one else in the world no is doing what it. we're doing. <laughs> but collectively, we probably have the most paranormal material. So if you were going to hire somebody, which uh, would be a super fun show. Collectively, for sure. Yeah. I, I know because I just recorded a new album, plugging it. Uh, plug uh, it right away, right uh, away. October, it comes out. It's called Free Love. It's, it'll be free. It'll be a free album. Oh. But like the uh, the topics on that album are, because I was going through like the editing with the record label. Uh-huh. And I'm like, okay, this track, this track's about Bigfoot. This track's about the gin. Oh. Um, this track's about, um, you know, aliens, uh, disclosure. This one's about maybe ghosts. This one's about, That's you know, awesome. others. So, so like alchemy or crystals or, you know, things like that. So it's like, oh, my whole act now is almost. That's amazing. But, but uh, the album is free. The album will be free. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Let me know when that comes out, and I'll re. Uh, you know, okay. Cool. Coming out, we'll yeah, get it'll be sometime in October. So. Okay. Yeah. Well, this will be out in September. So, okay, cool. well, where can they find you? So they'll know the They'll find album. me at com. They'll be able to download it from there. And it's R Y A N S I N G E R. Really? I've spelled it wrong in my phone. Have you? I Ryan think I Singer? Have. Singer's I think I one of the easy words. You spelled wrong. You signer? I think I did. Yeah. Oh, my God. That's like a pretty easy last name. I too. know. <laughs> <laughs> I can spell Sultanovich, but I can't spell Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thank God I made it to your house. Yeah. I, um, it's funny because I did a uh, recent investigation at this comedy club. You've been there. Mason uh, City. Mason City. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Chris Spires joint. Yeah, and you sleep. Did you sleep upstairs? Yeah, yeah. yeah. We did an investigation like two, like a month and a half ago. Oh, and the, did you? Some people from Augusta, the Augusta Paranormal ah. team came down. Uh, a guy and his son, 16-year-old son. And a woman and her 15-year-old daughter. Now, was that team, uh, because I believe it was when I was, no, maybe it was when I was in Nebraska. The, no, maybe it was Nebraska. I can't remember, but did they take you to a theater? They had a theater that they usually no. go to? No. Potentially. I, I don't know. We didn't talk about that. They just came, they drove two hours to come to the show and then uh, did the thing. And how was the investigation? It was fun, but it, uh, we had a break in the middle for pizza. But like there wasn't really anything crazy that I I witnessed or or found. But at one point, the 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 young girl, the daughter had this like energy pass through her and she was shaking. Oh, uh, and that was like right when the pizza showed up. So like her mom <laughs> her mom took her outside, and then like you know did some work on her. Ah. Um, you know because the mom's definitely a witch. The daughter's like a, a young witch in training. Okay. Um, and the the guy was Chad. He was like just kind of a guy who's like, you know, I'm not gonna let it go scare me. I'm gonna like we're gonna keep moving forward, kind of thing. Wow. Because then she did some cards. I forget what the cards were. They weren't traditional tarot cards. And she did like a four card spread. 
And the cards told her to stop doing the investigation. That particular investigation? Yeah. Like, and after, like, everybody was done eating, she had, like, you know, a pendulum and, you know, was, you know, like, do, doing that thing, trying to see, like, trying to connect again. And so then the daughter did a spread with her deck, and the cards were like, stop what you're doing. Like, very ominous. Well, and then I was like, well, I should probably, you want to, and she's like, I'm not, I'm done. She, she looked at this other guy, and she's like, I'm done. I'm not doing this anymore. This is, the cards are warning me to stop. Wow, very dramatic but, yeah, investigation. Right? Yeah. It was a very dramatic investigation. So then I'm like, well, give me a reading, if you don't mind, to see what it's, they're telling me about this. And it was like, okay, you can keep going. You need to, you know, uh, something in the past needs to be uncovered, and you need three people. You need two other people with you. So, Wait, that was about the investigation? About like about what we were going to do next. Oh, okay. So so that's the way they were interpreted. They're like, okay, I need to go back downstairs to the basement, to the creepiest part of the place. And also, uh, Chris, who is very into this, who's very cool, Chris Spire, yeah. right? Uh, he has a photo, though, of something he thinks is in there, right? Yeah, some a creepy, yeah, a creepy photo of like photo, what yeah. may or, yeah, maybe a girl. Um, yeah, taken from by some other people, I think, a few years back. Right, a girl and a Because night. the idea was that there were two ghosts in the place, apparently. People had said in the past, like two f- young female or two female spirits. This woman, um, she wasn't getting that vibe. She had gotten a vibe from like an older or like a male, like a male energy. Mm-hmm. And it, there was like some, I guess the history of the building is like some doctor in the late 19th century used to perform illegal abortions there. That, you know, upstairs. You hear that a lot in comedy clubs. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, there's a comedy store yeah. too, right? Yeah. Like you wonder... And so, and so the building, you know, it's in the middle of nowhere, Illinois, it's you know, in 1890. Very relieved women. Yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right? So, but apparently she was getting the energy from this guy that children are to be seen, not heard. That kind of old school mentality. All right. Of like, you're a child, don't speak. Be, like you can be was, like if I see you, don't talk to me. You're a child. And, and she thought that was directly at her child, at her daughter, right? Is okay. what she was thinking. Like right. this, whatever spirit that we've been in contact with here tonight doesn't want you talking to it. Is what she told the daughter. So and so the daughter wanted to really continue on. So she does another like card spread. She's like, okay, you can go, but don't speak. Don't don't do the que- don't don't be asking the questions. Um, cause it'll just anger it. It'll just make it mad. Hmm. So we go back downstairs. It's myself, uh, the bartender, uh, who works there and, uh, Stacy. And then we, uh, and then daughter, we go to this little room in this basement. So creepy. It's like so one wait, in the morning. Stacy is the one that just said to stop the investigation. No, no. Okay. She works She's at gone. the club. She right. works at the club. Oh, okay. Okay. The mother, uh, is the one who. Was like, I'm not going and to. And she's be. done, but the daughter. So she's done. She's upstairs and on stage, sitting on stage, with everybody else. So three of us go downstairs: the daughter, the bartender, and myself. Go back downstairs, and I'm supposed to be the one kind of like, well, me and the bartender can ask questions, right? But I'm supposed to be like closing my eyes and like meditating, getting images. Apparently, is what. Oh, that's what told. she told you to. Do. Okay. So we go down there, and we're doing, you know, the kind of, you know, the some of the usual stuff, like you know, if if you're here. You know, can you give us a sign? Can you give us a sign? Make a did, noise. Did you get blah, blah, blah. an image of acid reflux from no, the I, Yeah, no. <laughs> oh, I can't get past that. <laughs> well, <laughs> and, then, and then, like, you know, the beer fridge in the basement opens, and it's like, yeah, two drinks fall out. So, uh, and then Chris covering came the back in, and you were like, we couldn't help ourselves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Ghost to uh, do it. So, we're asking questions. The bartender starts asking some questions. Then, the daughter asks a question. One question. I ask some more. No, we're not really getting anything. And then the daughter says one more thing. Ask another question. She's got like a pendulum with her too. The second time the daughter spoke, right after she was finished speaking, um, I don't know if you have a language thing on this. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Right after the daughter asked something, I can't even remember what it was. Like, um, do you do you want to communicate with us through? Or like, she said something like, "It's okay, you can talk to us," or something like that. As soon as she's done with that second sentence, we hear from behind us, which is just a brick wall. Shut your fucking dog up. Like a real what? male voice, like yelling, but like in the distance, like, shut your fucking dog up. And we're like, we all heard that, right? Because <laughs> it's like one in the morning, right. I guess on, it's either Friday or Saturday, I can't remember what night. And so we're like, 
we're like, we all heard that, right? We're like, yeah. I'm like, let's move away from where the noise came from uh, just a little bit. Let's get away from, you know, because it's like, it was very angry. It was like that kind of where you're like, oh, someone's fucking, someone's mad. Right. And all of a sudden they come running down the steps because, you know, we're like, well, if you hear anything crazy, come on down, alert us. You know, and, you know, or we'll yell to you if something crazy is happening downstairs. And, and, and you guys are absolutely sure this is not somebody across the street. Well, see, we don't know what's happening. Oh. So they, but in the meanwhile, as we're like, we need to move away from that direction. Right. Whatever that is. Whatever that is. That scared, has scared me. Uh, but we're like maintaining our composure a little bit. Right. And they're coming down the stairs. Are you guys okay? Are you guys okay? We heard screaming coming from downstairs. And, uh, and then Stacy goes, yeah, we heard it too. It was right after. She asked a question, and the mother goes, "You weren't supposed to speak," uh-huh. and we, and that's when it clicked into us, like, "Oh, she wasn't supposed to talk." Right. Right after she talked, we heard a male voice say, "Shut your fucking dog up." Why a dog? Oh, because right? calling the little girl a dog. Yeah. Right? Oh. And so then we're like, "Let's get out of the basement." <laughs> so we all we all run up the stairs, and I don't know if you've ever been in the basement at that club. I have. But it's rickety. It's dark. Low ceilings. Long the whole length of the building. It's like it's like old and like the creep. It's like. The epitome of creepy. Right. It's a cellar. Yeah, it's a cellar. And so we get upstairs and we're all kind of like freaked out. And then we're like, you know, we're trying to figure out where it came from. And so we're like, okay, someone. So we had the guy, Chad, he went outside of the building because behind us would have been the street. Right. And so he went out in the street. We, uh, me, the son, and one other person went back downstairs. And just for the people that want that know where this club is, it's like there's it's very it's not a lot of people in that yeah, town. Yeah, it's very it's rural. Like four streets. Yeah. And this is like a brick. It's like population to twenty five hundred people or something. This is, yeah, and it looks like a Stephen King movie. Yeah, and it's like downtown has a stop four way stop sign. It doesn't even have a stop That's line. it. And there's a seven eleven. Yeah. Yeah. And uh so he goes outside and he yells the exact same thing. And it sounded identical. So it turns out some random guy was out in the street and yelled that maybe from down the street at the bar, even though I don't know why he's yelling about a dog at like one in the morning. But he just happened to yell that (laughs) at the exact (laughs) moment that girl spoke again Uh. to where it sounded like this disembodied voice screaming at us from the darkness. So it was like... So it was like one of those perfect storm events to where you feel like something paranormal may have just happened but in like a really scary way. <laughs> but it turns out it's probably very easily explained right. because it sounded exactly the same location, same level of like volume. This woman said it was a guy that didn't like yeah, his so, daughter. But like when he went outside and yelled that as the test, it sounded identical to what I had heard anyway. That's... And we all agreed like, oh yeah, that sounded very similar. So... um but yeah, that was the craziest thing that had happened on that. Oh. I mean, I didn't, I didn't, I mean, the son at one point thought he saw something moving in the darkness and, uh, when we were in the basement. Um, we had a weird thing happen where the one guy stepped in a puddle or he, like his shoe and sock got soaking wet. So then we got the <laughs> flashlights out and, and we're was- looking and there's just nothing there really to like. Did he wet his pants? No, like he's, he's like, as we were leaving, we're like, okay, we're done here. Nothing. We're not getting anything. So we're walking up, we're leave, getting ready to leave the basement, and then he's like, oh, shit. And we're like, what? He's like, oh, I stepped in something, a puddle, a hole of water. And so we turn the lights on, or we get the flashlights out, and we're looking for 10 minutes for a puddle of water that could have soaked, like, your sock One through your shoe. One half of his shoe, yeah. Yeah, and, like, there's a tiny bit of water, like, in the shallowest of all puddles on the floor, that's like maybe I, I spilled like a drink for a little second on, not on the cement. Not with that green cup you're not going to spill. Right. <laughs> but, uh, but there's nothing to like submerge your foot. Like we right. looked. There was nowhere he could have submerged his foot uh, to where his, he could have gotten soaked. So that was just a weird thing that happened. Right. We don't know how, what or how that was. But I'm sure there's some expo- explanation that we just don't know about. But like it wasn't necessarily paranormal in nature. And it was just like, this is so weird. Like, how did that happen? Well, paranormal, you know, just not normal. Right. So Outside the normal. Yeah, yeah. So I yeah. guess it was, but, um, <clears throat> excuse me. There was nothing really from that investigation as you know, like, you know, as, as they are like, you know, that is a creepy place though. That is I mean, a, and, yeah. I, and I don't mean that in a bad way. Cause Chris knows it's just a brick building, but it's, I remember one time, it's a yeah. great club. There was, they used to have I an org, they used to have an organ on stage. And 
I remember I was performing there. It was like soon after my grandpa had died. I was relatively close with. And I said, well, if my grandpa's here... He'll play the organ? He'll play the organ or something, right? Or will give us a sign of some kind. The organ makes noise. Like these like weird... Or whatever. On its own? Yeah. And then we come to find out it's not even plugged in. Oh. So that creeped me out in the middle of my set. Which I shouldn't have done that, like, during the middle of my set. I know. But, like, that, that place is creepy, though. But, like, like so that has happened to me there. Um, and that was really creepy. Um, like, the whole audience was like, we're, like, we all experienced this together. Right. Because then I pick up the plug. And I'm like, look at this. <laughs> look at this. It's not even plugged in. And everybody starts freaking out a little bit. Uh, and I'm like, I don't know how we do comedy after this. I know. Um, but it was, uh, but you yeah. You have to summon a funny ghost. You're right. To, to ease the tragedy. I've been doing a thing lately because of the, the, how into reincarnation I am. Whenever there's a bug flying around on stage, I always try to figure out who it is. Oh, because you, like, you, is this, yeah. Is so it Hitler? Is or it? no, like Rodney Dangerfield or, or, you know, I go that way. Oh, you don't mean a physical bug. You mean when there's no, no, a No, no, a bug. No, a real bug. Oh. A physical bug. I don't think it's Hitler, but I'm always like, oh, you're probably a comedian. Because you're a bug? The, the comedian... Now He's you in have the to bug now. Re- reincarnation, because Re- okay, the, some comedian from the past has died, and they want re- to stay in, in, a in this current form. They're a bug, oh. so they're hanging out on stage. You know the bugs that are like on stage, like flying around oh. sometimes when you're performing. Yeah, sometimes. Yeah, oh, like it's not that often. It's very rare. Right, but, but like they're... every once in a while, a beetle or something will be uh-huh. flying around while you're performing. It's like, what are you doing? Like, why is it? <laughs> it won't leave. Yeah. To me, I'm like, I now like try to have a conversation with the bug. Oh, that's... Uh, yeah. Like whether it's and Rodney or... I'm like, are you Rodney, if you are Rodney Dangerfield, you will remain on stage until I'm finished with my set. <laughs> Does it ever work? And then work? I said that to the last, last time I saw a bug, and it started flying towards the light. Ah. And I was like, don't fly to the light. Not again, Rodney. <laughs> Not again. You already went to the light once. Um, but... Uh, so reincarnation is your new thing. I, I just love reading. I just love the oh. idea. Oh, I do too. I love I, the well, idea. Have you had anybody do a past life or anything for you? Yeah, I had someone do a past life, but I don't believe. I didn't. I don't. I'm not in. I'm not in. What did they say on what she did? What did she, what did she think you were? She said I was one of my past lives. I was this horrific, awful, evil twin, and I had murdered people in my family, and I convinced my brother's wife to run away with me, only to have her excommunicated from the. Like city and that sounds like me. Left out in the the wilderness to die and because I wanted wow. the throne, and that um, she she told me that all of these people that I'd wronged and hurt and murdered and stuff throughout in that life, which was apparently a lot. Like I was like King Longshanks from Braveheart. I was like one of those evil, like I was supremely evil in this life. Apparently, that all these people are now following me in every concur or every life since. As this black cloud preventing me from ever achieving my true happiness. But are you happy now? I think I'm pretty happy, happy now. Yeah, yeah. But and but here's here's the kicker. She's like, but for fifteen hundred dollars, oh, I'll light some candles and we'll do the ceremony where we remove this black cloud. Oh, okay, yeah. That prevents you from ever achieving true happiness. And I was like, I think you're one of these people. Yeah, <laughs> you're clearly one of these people. I think yeah, because yeah. I don't have fifteen hundred dollars. You should know that. And like, what kind of person would let someone walk out of their right. establishment knowing that they are going to be prevented from ever having true happiness again because of all of this stuff right? and not help them? And you, and plus candles are at the dollar store. So you, I don't know what, where she's getting her candles, but the whole thing, exactly. I, I see holes in the story. She was a psychic I was going to on a weekly basis. Uh, oh, so she was kind and this of, this was at the end of the, right. end of the run. Right. She was making her, you know, home run pitch. How, uh, let me ask you something because I, I can't. So I only have one client that I allow to come once a month because she does thirty minutes. But most of them, most people, if they call me too much, I got nothing to say. What was she talking about? Was she like really giving good information, or was uh, she? I got to remember because this was well, a long time ago. There was something ago. that brought you there, and sometimes I know she was right down the street from where I worked at the time. And it can be therapy sometimes. Yeah. So it, it's a cheaper, or you know, sometimes I, I think my friend Felicia said this best. She goes, "Hey, sometimes it's nice to have an hour to talk about you." And I thought, "Yeah, but hopefully That's I'm more yeah. accurate than that." But um, 
I'm trying yes. to remember like what she said that, you know, she was hitting on some things that maybe resonated with me that might have been, you know, if I had more discernment, I could have realized were easy. Plus, you know, sometimes in your life, you're just at a point where you need something. Yeah. Sometimes you just need something. And I was definitely at that point. Yeah. I was at, I, well, I was at one of those points. And um, you were vulnerable and she mm. went in with the uh, candle. Yeah. And so when she came in, I was like. You know, a lot of people are like, oh, tell me about my past life. Was I Cleopatra? You know, right. everybody wants to be Cleopatra. Right. So, um, I'm running a past life special myself. For are you? $9.99. <laughs> <laughs> but like hearing, I didn't like hearing necessarily that I was like this evil bastard. No. But I mean, at the same time, I was like, it was a sexy kind of like, you were this, you were this crazily, you were so bad and evil, you know? The women. Like one of those, uh, like one of those, like really creepy scumbag characters from Game of Thrones, you know? Wow. And then it's like, but then to tell me that, you know, like all of these people have, are preventing you, you know, they're punishing you for what you've done to them in a past life, and it's just going to keep happening. Those are unless just I do parents. this, unless I those do this. <laughs> yeah, those parents. are mom and dad. <laughs> and, um, I walked out of there and never saw her again after that. Good. Cause like, you know what? I don't have that money. I'm going to have to think about this. Oh, I can do payment plans, blah, 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 blah. I'm like, I know you can, but I'm going to have to think about this. And I just never went back. You know what else is weird about that? See, I have a, a I've never had a past life thing done, but I had two psychics tell me I worked in the circus. And then I had one psychic that didn't believe in past lives. And he said, you should be working for the circus. And so circus is all around me. That's weird. Well, that's sort of like, I mean, I'm a tarot reader and I'm on the road doing comedy. So you've always I'm been kind of a of traveling, the, yeah, like, like a traveling, and like, I yeah, hate the circus. And, yeah. and somebody said, well, probably yeah, because you're done with it. It's, yeah, I'm done with it. So I kind of like it on that. But I also kind of think maybe not that I don't believe this woman that you're telling me about. But, you know, if our soul's existence is to experience everything, then I bet we all did have the evil life. You know what yeah, I mean? Sure. Like maybe we could have done it all, not like that, but you know what I mean? Like it's that is, yeah, that's I, I believe that, and I, it's also interesting too that I I guess I've never considered that there was a psychic out there that wouldn't believe in past lives. I know, and he was an automatic writer. I was in that was in. Uh, well, you know what though? I I know a medium that's a racist. <laughs> it's like yeah, you know, like I used to like hang how out can with you her. like how can you have access to this like. Higher Divine vibration, source, and then and, yeah. the N-word comes out of your mouth. It's yeah, like, that, what? Yeah. But you know what I'm learning, too, is, uh, first of all, psychic people, psychic and spiritual, very different. Yes. Very. Some people may just have the gift and be awful people. Yeah, and um, some people could be psychic and wanted to work for the Nazis. Right, right, exactly, yeah. and they probably did. Yeah. So it's kind of like a different, um, it's a different thing, but I have been hearing more and more about Santeria, which, Ooh, yeah. uh, and every time I hear about it, my best friend Sonia says, I, I love it. When are we going to drink some more? <laughs> <laughs> and, um, but I, uh, and I have a friend that is involved somewhat. Do you like sangria, by the way? I can't remember ever. I can't remember. I don't I know had. if I've ever tried it's it. It's wine and punch, right? I think so. It's, yeah. It's yeah, very, okay. uh, it's like Kool-Aid and I probably not Kool-Aid. But it's wine and fruit, right? Yeah, it's 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 almost just it's like another version of purple drink. <laughs> <laughs> it's like red drink. But uh so you have a friend who's getting into Santeria? Well no, she's been in it all her oh, life. Oh she's been in it, yeah. And she just sat down with me and I I almost she's not a paranormal person, but I gotta have her on the podcast. Because of course, you know, I'm vegan and they do a lot of animal sacrifice, so there's a little I you know, I, then I have to pull back and go I can only do what I, you know what I mean? You know that point in your life sure. where you go, I can, I can't change the whole world. We can only sacrifice an egg if it's not fertilized. Right. Or whatever. Or I don't, or, yes. Or not even if you're vegan. <laughs> I guess vegetarian. Well, it's be. a weird, and I'm a yeah. weird, I'm an animal rights vegan, which means. Yeah. So you don't want to be, you're not going to want to get into Santa Rita. No. Then. And I don't want to know. And I, uh, I, and I have to clear this up now because I think everyone is. I think people listen to me thinking bad things. So they're like, I think everyone just screamed, what the hell is she talking about? But I say animal rights vegan as in my neighbor has a whole yard full of uh, chickens. So she sells me their eggs because I can see they're not in little cages. or So yeah, yeah. if it's animal rights, I'm okay. Makeup is my, like, I get really mad at Drew Barrymore and, and, and Jennifer uh, Gardner because L'Oreal is the worst. And I'm like, really, rich people, you can't just ask and yeah. not make more money. But anyways, but that's my tirade. Um, but I... Uh, well, I mean, I'm into that. I mean, I think once people realize that... People are always like, humans, we're just the smartest of all the animals. It's like, right. really, do you think chickens would 
destroy their own habitat uh, with global warming right. if they were in charge? Or they, they are they are we really someone? smarter? <laughs> yeah. Do do you know do, would cats pollute the water? Right. That right. they survive off of. And sure, they would eat each other there, but they wouldn't keep each other in cages forever. And then you know what I mean? They sure. Not really yeah. Know so for so who's them. really? How are we defining what smart is? Right. It's like a fixed game. It's a, that's a great way to put it. It's but fixed, right now yeah. we have the, uh, but you know, it's so weird the way sharks are attacking people now and that lion ate two lion hunters like in Africa. That was like, I don't know a person alive who didn't kind of like Go, love yeah. that story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. Or to a certain degree, like, right. yeah, good for yeah. you. I like, it's like that lion at the San Francisco Zoo, like, what was that, eight years ago? Got where those teenagers were taunting it. There was three teenagers taunting this lion, I believe. This lion had been there for 15 years. So that's a very important part of the story. Right. This lion had been there for 15 years. These Apparently these three teenagers were taunting it to where it jumped over the enclosement, like the, like wow. the walls. Wow. And to, to get them. Didn't hurt anyone else. Didn't attack any other person in the zoo. It went and got these... It went after the three that were taunting it. Oh my god! So it's like very specific memory. Like, no, I'm. You know, people are screaming. It's like, don't worry, I'm not. I'm not after you. Right. You know, like, but like that lion was there for 15 years and could have escaped. But it was only when these kids had pushed it too far wow. did it realize. Like, how pissed off were you? Are you if you're the lion? Like, I you jump over the wall face. and you're like, I could have been. <laughs> I could have been out this whole time. I just gave this place the best 15 years of my damn life. Like that's when you realize like, holy shit, I could have gotten out of here right. this whole time. But that's how much like humans can piss off oh, yeah. each you, other, let you, alone you, nature. Yeah. You should have my friend, the animal communicator on your podcast because it's fascinating. And now the turn is weird, right? Like, like that. But that was my, um, but back to Santeria. Cause we, I knew okay, you and okay. I, we're not, we're probably been, we've probably been talking for four hours and it seems like a minute cause I yeah, know yeah. I could talk to you forever. So, um, so I can't get too close. I can't get too sure. close with that, but the stories that she tells me and the curses that people put on and this and that, I have to talk to someone and Joey Diaz. I, I want to talk to, I don't know him well enough to ask yet, but I have met him a couple of times and he's told me some Santeria stories, but that is beyond crazy like my friend was telling me that someone when she was very young um she she married very young and her husband's wife because they had split right at like age 18 she was having their child uh they attached a dead soul to her and it was the craziest story and she went to this other i forget what they call him to have it removed i gotta i'm I'm, I'm gonna hack up this story terribly and then i'm gonna get her on the podcast or i'm gonna get it right um Jump ahead 50 years, this guy's doing Reiki on her and goes, this is the weirdest thing. Jesus just came down and grabbed a guy with a suit off of your back and he went to heaven. And it was like, what happened? What? And when she was a kid, they couldn't get this thing off her and she had like totally forgot about it. And she went through all this stuff. They flew her to Cuba and they covered her in some kind of dust and all these people were dancing and singing. And then 50 years later, the guy goes, that's oh, weird. Isn't it? Uh, my but then you yeah. think, what is what are we capable of as human beings? What is, so wait, another human being can stick a dead person. I can stick a dead person on the That's, end of you. Yeah. Uh, a friend of mine, Brian, who's a comedian. He, I talked to him about his Santeria story. He oh. had a, uh, he had, uh, someone recommend Santeria, like essentially a witch doctor or whatever. Was it about for, for something that he, that he needed help with. And it, it, it was, it wasn't, um, it was essentially just kind of like some burning some incense and doing some, some, it wasn't anything like animal sacrifice. It wasn't that level. Right. Um, but, uh, and he said it seemed to work. Well, but like, so I mean, it's interesting because also where we're going tonight, we're going to, uh, the old LA zoo, right? The abandoned LA, LA zoo. zoo. We gotta, we gotta shoot a web paranormal care in there too. Yeah. And apparently that this place is a hotbed for Santeria. People oh, are going there really? and doing something. Oh, okay. Well, we, I got a pocket full of selenite. Yeah, I'll have to grab some selenite before we go to something. Um, and I also have, I'll have a tiny little pocket knife, mace, and a flashlight. Yeah, the, but uh, so I've been up there. It's like nothing. There's, you know, there's people walking around, just kind of hiking around and stuff. You know, it's I just bought crazy. a slingshot and ping pong balls. 
<laughs> Does that work? I, well, here's what I figured. I didn't think about it tonight. Uh, but I thought for the zombie apocalypse, if I shoot golf balls, because I'm against guns, but I could have them <laughs> slingshot at golf balls, what? and then so people wouldn't even know what it comes to. They, they hear, and so, the guy goes down, and they go, what happened? So you're just against combustion <laughs> at this point? During the zombie apocalypse, you're willing to, like, <laughs> hurl objects as long as, like, Combustion's not involved. For sure, a golf is that? Ball. I don't even know if it's combustion. <laughs> I'm not gonna but break like the that skin. makes a gun work. I don't want to break the skin. <laughs> yeah, okay. Oh, out oh okay. <laughs> what about a BB gun? A good BB gun. You know, but you still got a gun. So then people would. Then I'd be a hypocrite, right? Uh, I'm not actually yeah. against guns. If well, I thought I, don't think I was it's in danger, I would get a gun. You know, I think it was. Would people hate guns as much if they didn't actually kill people? Or you know what? But you know what? Because BB too? guns don't kill you. No, but in the zombie apocalypse, I would get a gun. I'd get a big gun. Oh yeah, you'd need one. Yeah, I. You know, I was thinking that today. In our, um, this is the weirdest podcast ever, but I think it's great. Um, in our, like, I was thinking, who are we when we lose? When people lose their jobs, they get so depressed because they lose their identity. Because like, I'm a comedian, you know, and I'll always be a comedian, or I'm a terror reader, and I have those labels. But they say, if those labels are gone, who are you? And I think that's the zombie apocalypse. Who am I? I are, am I then a warrior? Am I then? Who do you become? Who like do you at become your with no label. Ooh, that's an interesting. I mean, like, if you didn't have some kind of role to fill or to ascribe right. oneself to, like, I mean, I don't know. You can get into that conversation of like, you know, the ego and attachment to identity and all that. Right. Like, but um, if you have nothing to do and you have nowhere to be um i mean what ideally you existence? could be nothing that right. would be ideal right yeah just to be i mean i don't know does that well, it, there's different phrases for it i'm sure but like you know whether you reach a like you know you just transcend and become like one with the everything or maybe that's when you understand that instead of these labels that you have where i am a terror reader i am a comedian or you know We're these things one. now it's like i am part of the what is it, Huxley? I just read Doors of Perception. What's you, that about, Tony? Uh, I'll do as Huxley. I'll do as Huxley. Uh, it's about his first, it's his first hand account. Or do a Huxley. Yeah. What <laughs> <laughs> is I'll do as Huxley? He, is that his name? Yeah, I'll do as Huxley. Uh, he wrote he Brave already, New World. I'm already lost. Oh, uh, okay. I can't say that. Anyway. Um, Can you imagine me spelling his last name? That's easy. That's easy. His first name. It's not as easy as singer. His first name is like A-L-D-U-O-U-S. Okay. What is nationality? Is he Indian? No, I don't know. Oh. He's a writer. He's like a pretty well-known writer. He was. Okay. He wrote like Brave New World, which is a famous book. Okay. Uh, Doors of Perception is pretty famous. It's his first-hand account of masculine in the 50s. Oh, of doing masculine. Oh, okay. He's my kind of guy. Uh, and so he talks about like, you know, like it's a psychedelic trip journal, essentially. Um, and... He, uh, oh, he talks about the isness of like who we are and everything, right? And like when he was on masculine, he, he just stared, he could stare at his pants or just a chair leg all day and realize how beautiful it was and how it's, we're all just part of everything. Oh, I, I'm amazed. And like the ego melts, a, and the ego melts away. Oh, right. Okay. So, um, so I guess that would be the zombie apocalypse. I, I need although survival becomes your number one thing. Right. Well, yeah. And, and then also I can knit. <laughs> I, we we have no role, Brian. Ryan, and yeah, yeah. We, we don't. Nobody knitting would jokes. be depending on like the climate right. or, or where you are. I can knit during the collapse. I got textiles covered. I could. Um, what are you gonna do? Oh. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, Boom! You're uh, out. You're I'm, out. <laughs> I might be out. I used to do a joke about that. Like if the apocalypse happened, like comedians were all left outside the cave. You know? Oh yeah. No. Like during the like, you remember those like little exercises you did in school? Like if there was a there's a nuclear bomb, you get to only pick so many people that go inside the cave to rebuild society. Ooh, remember you, that? Did it, you had to do that in school? Yeah, we had to do that in school. Maybe it was because. Yeah, I did it in like fifth grade. With the teachers to try to see if you could again? figure out what which people you would save. To rebuild society in a successful way. That's an awful lot of pressure for a child. But it, I mean, it was a fun little exercise, I guess, but also to realize, you know, who had value. Like, oh, so it's like I hate you had this all exercise. these different professions and you had to pick the right combination of people. Oh, professions, but not other students. No, 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 like, no, no, no. Kill no. that kid. No, it wasn't like a Stanford oh, prison experiment, okay, I think. Um, <laughs> That's what I thought you were saying. No, no, you had like, to pick a list mean. of professions. That you would save oh, okay. in a very limited number of spaces to be able to rebuild society after everything went crazy. 
So like doctors, nurses, architects, teachers, farmers. It's still no, it's But a... comedians, we'd be out. Yeah, nobody. I mean, that's the joke. It's like a doctor can be a little bit funny, but we can't be a little bit doctor. Right. <laughs> Comedian circus workers, I, I'd, be, I'd lose it twice. twice I, did, I, wouldn't, I was past life hypnotized, actually. Oh, what happened there? But I don't think I went under. I have trouble with because I was like things. physically uncomfortable during the under the There's going no under way. process. I was like doing like I just wasn't situated correctly on the furniture. That can throw off the whole thing, but also I feel like I thought, and this might have been something I saw in the Rockford Files. I thought because <laughs> it's so long ago, so it may not be true. Um, Only I'm trying to remember Zach his name. Uh, James Garner. James Garner is that you can't be hypnotized if you're smart because your brain is moving too fast or, I had always or heard, if you're dumb, one of the two. I had heard that the smarter you are, the more likely you are to be able to be hypnotized is what I'd heard. Oh, I must be an idiot. I, I can't uh, maybe they'd say the, the one thing or the other to people depending on what, what happened. Right. You know, you know what? what? Don't worry about it. Really smart people can't get hypnotized. Or maybe they say, you know what? The really smart people are the ones who go under easy. Right. Um, I have heard that multiple times, though, that really smart people are more, or they'll more easily go under. But you know what else? I took the Minnesota personality test years ago. My friend was this genius uh, 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 PhD psychologist that, that found out something about borderline personalities that no one had ever known. Like, she was off the charts. And she had a practice and give me that test. And the test is you're supposed to be at 50%. If you're at 50% of like, I guess in masculine and feminine, I felt at 50%, which meant I don't hate men, I don't hate women, I'm good in the middle there. And then she came to schizophrenia, and I was at 80%. And I go, whoa, what's that about? And she goes, no, 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 that's, that's what a comedian should be, because you split thoughts. And she said, so you can, that's what a joke is, a joke is splitting thoughts. Like, um, And then I read a book called Cognitive Cognitive Thinking by Edward de Bono, and he said how he teaches um, corporations how to think, and the first thing he teaches them, he diagrams a joke, because here he goes, it's split thinking. You're not thinking uh, vertically, this leads to this, leads to this, that gets you nowhere. When you think laterally, like there's five, uh, you know, you can get more done. How can I connect these options. two seemingly unrelated right. things? Right. So I wonder if we can't be hypnotized because there is always a dialogue going on in their head. Like right now you're listening to me and on the other half of your brain, you're going, what the fuck is she talking about? <laughs> right? And you're entertaining both those thoughts at once. <laughs> and, and so maybe we can't be hypnotized because on the one hand we're going, I'm hypnotized and the other half is going, my foot itches. Yeah. I think I have been hypnotized before, though, but what? not in a past life situation, like oh. a comedic hypnotist. What, what, oh, were you on stage? I think I was one of the people on stage yeah. when I was a waiter at a comedy club. So if I say pilot, you're going to... Oh, shit. No, 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 no. I turn I turned into a dog. Um, I do think that there is something really cool about hypnosis, though. Uh, the um, idea, yeah. I, I yeah. need to go under, though. I'd love to go under. I need to try again, because I, I am fascinated by past life. Uh, therapy and, and things like that. And like the book, um, Many Lives, Many Masters is incredible. It's the, it's a really well known book about the, uh, the psychologist, this really well known guy. He was like, in, he was like the head of the, was it the University of Wisconsin psychology department? Anyway, he, he dabbled a little bit in past life or in hypnosis therapy. In regression therapy. It's oh. like going within this same life. Back to someone's childhood to recover memories they couldn't remember. And then, because uh, he acknowledged that doing that was very helpful with, for people. And some it, people, yeah. It helps them move past problems they're currently having. Right. When they realize the cause of it th through, this through this hypnosis. Even though they might not be like totally aware of it. Even though you're still kind of aware during hypnosis. So... He's doing that on a patient who just can't be helped by all the other doctors he's kind of like referring her to. And all of a sudden he's like, okay, I'll do the, we'll do the regression and see if this works. And then he regresses her back. And then something weird happens. She just goes further back than he's accustomed to someone going to where like, I think she's like in the void or something. She's describing like the void, like pre birth. And he's just like, uh, okay, what, you know, and then Moving boom, next thing you know, he, he just ha starts having all these sessions with her, um, where he becomes converted from this, like, you know, I don't know if he was atheistic or, or what, but he became this, like, 
he was like a skeptic of like, you know, past lives, you're crazy, I'm a doctor. You know, to now like, this is definitive scientific proof. I hate doctors. Of, I mean, now I like him better. Of but past I'm, lives. Yeah. Um, and the book is fascinating. Wow. And um, he's, um, yeah. Why can't, what did I can't, he I can't, think I'm was in the void? Name. No, it was, a vo- it was a voice of one of the masters. So when she was in the void, she's hearing the she voice of the masters? She was like the collective consciousness. Wow. Or whatever, whatever it was. What was or what whatever it, it is. Did she say she, what it Answers like? to all kinds of... She knew information about him that there was no way she would have known when she was in that in-between state. That's There's no way he w- she would have known the specifics of like a child's... His, like, he, when he, him and his wife had a child that died very early after birth. Um, with some very rare disease. Like, she knew that as this other person. Like, her voice would change a little bit. So she became, so the master, so she channeled the master. Essentially, yeah. Wow. That, I have but also, she was family. also like a slave and like, uh, you know, the help, quote unquote, in many of her past lives. Can you imagine, you know, I did a, I did a, you know, I got, it's so funny. I'm so enjoying this conversation, but I got an email from one guy that told me my interviews were all over the place. <laughs> so I was trying to rein so him the, in. So the one guy who had knows. a critique <laughs> is affecting your mind about all the other people who you're enjoy right, it. You're right. You're right. Thank you. The all one right, person good. sitting up front with her arms oh crossed God, at a comedy yes. show. Yes. That's like I. one of my dry bars finally went vinyl, and I clicked on the wrong thing, and I saw the comments. Oh, my God. Don't ever look at the comments. Oh, my no, God. No, there's no reason. There's no reason. So... um uh, so, but back to, um, you know, I always think this cause I, I'm obsessed with the tunnels in Portland and I just did another, I did two podcasts on them. And can you imagine if we like when, see, ever since I was a little kid, I've always watched the water come out of the faucet and thought someday it's not going to do that. I don't know why. And sometimes I'll be turn on the faucet and I'll be like, I'm very grateful that this, com- that this is like this now, which is just weird. But I always feel like, can you imagine if, can you imagine being a slave? Like all of a sudden you're on a ship and there's no, like how comfortable, how freaking comfortable are we in our lives, in our apartments that we call our friends and go, I'm not happy today. You know what I mean? These people were chained to things. They were like, ah. Many of them died on transport. Yeah. Yeah. How can we, I don't know, just blows my mind. I think that weirdly, empathetically, I can go to that space for like a half a second and go, I can't, like at Ghost Adventures once, they go, they, they tied up the slaves, they chained their feet like this. They put Zach in it for a minute and he was like, I, I gotta, I can't, I can't. And I think, well, you can't. People were in those every night. Like, yeah. what's wrong with humanity? What's wrong? You know, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen. Either, either it's going to, well, I don't think there's neither. Eventually, we will we'll move past the I hope being, I'm dead by being the animal. I hope I'm dead by that. You hope you're dead by the time we figure but it all then out. When the faucet doesn't work. Oh, oh, <laughs> oh! You're going. You think you hope you're dead by the time everything collapses. Yeah. I was saying it's eventually that we will move toward a place where we move beyond violence and stuff. I hope. That's so. what I'm saying. I think we're. I think we're. I think we're headed in that direction. That's what is supposed to be after the next three years. This three years is supposed to be knock it all down, and then pe- it's supposed to be community. I think the next generation is going to have it right. They already don't care pansexual, bisexual, tra- they don't care. I think as soon as... And they'll stop judging. I think that in accord with like the rejection of technology to a certain degree of, yeah. of, of retreating inward anyway. Yeah. I mean, the retreating inward is one thing for like spiritual journey and all that kind of stuff. But it's, but I think, you know, the further you go inward on this spiritual journey, the more you realize you have to be connected to the outside world. Right. And I think that's the trick here. Like you go so far inside that you turn yourself inside out. Now you're out. You have to be, you realize you have to be out. I mean, because meditation, I mean, all these things always kind of lead back to meditation for me whether it's psychedelics or right. magic or these other things, it always seems to have like one kind of common theme. And that's like this, the, the seed of the, the, the pure meditation aspect of it. You know, I meditate every morning and I swear to God, I think cause it's so hot in LA, I think I'm going to go deaf from <laughs> fans and air conditioners. Right. And that's the happiest time in the morning when I get up, when I don't need either and it's not hot and I just sit and it's so quiet and I love it. And then, then the dog comes out and looks at me like, turn on the fan. Yeah. Turn on the fan. I have a fan that's so loud in my room that 
like I can't watch like a movie with it on. Oh yeah, I do that, and I uh, and I worry about my neighbors. But it's yeah, I do too. But like you can't, I can never hear them, so I'm guessing they can never hear me really. Well, I had to go down and tell them to stop playing the guitar once because if, oh. a lot of people don't know if you live in Los Angeles and. You live there, wherever, it doesn't matter where you live, there's a musician underneath you. Yeah, I have a, one musician. of my roommates is a musician. They're, they're playing <laughs> a show go. tonight. <laughs> yeah, and there's always... Somebody. We used to have a drummer that lived above us who would oh. drum. It's like, you can't do that. You can't be second floor drummer. No, you can't, no. You can't be second floor You can't be upstairs drumming. He was downstairs guitar, and uh, I was like, you just moved the other room, and it was one in the morning. And I was kind of like, you know, I knocked on the door. I was like, midnight's okay. And he was like, ah, oh, yeah. And they're very nice now. But I was kind of like, it's like, I forgot. And I was like, you forgot about society? Yeah. Well, it's one in the morning. But I don't care when they play during the day and stuff. And Some people nice. have that ability. Yeah. To be, I, I dated a woman years ago who, she would argue wherever we were. Oh. Like, she would be loud. Like, oh. we could be out in public at a restaurant, and if, like, she wanted to have an argument, she didn't, like, seemingly just didn't care if people heard. And I'm just like, even in my apartment, I'm like, we can't yell. Yeah, yeah. There's, we have neighbors. Like, I don't want the neighbors knowing my business. Right. Um, or you don't want to be the loudest. But to neighbor. me, there's also freedom in that. Like, I look at people like that, and I'm like, you're so free. <laughs> See, you're such an asshole, you're free. I... <laughs> <laughs> I think that's what what the internet is about is you know I, I did a I helped out a YouTube star. I went to her house 5 hours doing a thing so she could have ghost hunters on there and I explained to her everything to do in this house which really was haunted. She was right about that. And then just at the end she kind of dissed us. Me and this other girl she kind of gave us a little diss and she said the activities increased or something like that and i was like or she said what i think she said the activities increased and i was like and this makes me crazy i wanted to go did you do what i told you because they never do i'll explain to you for hours incense this that you know and and they never do it and then they call back you know can you can you come back no because you didn't do what i said it's not a one-time click you got to keep your vibration up Whoa! Yeah. Oh, you okay? got to <laughs> or bang your elbow and scare yourself. <laughs> but so, and then I thought, you know what? She doesn't think I dissed them in public. She thinks I'm talking to my friends. I'm talking to my three thousand friends or three million friends, whatever that follow me. And I thought she has no. There's whereas we were kids, or even when I first started out in comedy, you didn't go on the radio and talk bad about someone. No and way. You got a thing. And I thought, they don't know. So even the people leaving the comments, like I saw one and I answered it, and then it got real quiet. Because these people are like, she's some video, she's not here. I'm trying to make myself sound smart. by. Well, I can't believe you responded to me. Like, well, geez. Well, first of all, let me say that, like, you know, I do really appreciate what you're doing, blah, but blah, blah, yeah, blah. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, I got to say that, blah, 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 blah. They'll backtrack real quick sometimes. Yeah. And so they're not... Uh, it, the internet is basically going to become, you know, problems with people putting up naked pictures or whatever. Everything is going to be on the internet. And I believe that the overuse of shame is going to do away with it. You know what I mean? Like, if we're all naked on the internet, we're not going to pick on anybody else for being naked on the internet. Does that make sense? Yeah. Like, it's, I, I think that's. Yeah, I think about. there's a great collapse of that. That yeah. will happen at some point because people are just like, I'm not living, like, I'm not getting any joy from living my life through this social media or through this, you know, this, you know, synth, you know, this fake experience right? that's been created. And some people are like, well, what, who gets to decide what's real? And, you know, your reality is what you make it. It's like, whatever, you could argue that shit all day. We know there's a difference between being out in a room with people and being, texting someone on your phone. There's a difference energy wise. And if mm-hmm. you're going to sit here and act like there's not, you're just you're lying. You're, you're lying to yourself. Yeah. You're or you're a robot. I don't like robots. And like, I don't know who hurt those people. Right. But it was me. <laughs> <laughs> I said something. But like, yeah, that's the best part about being alive is like you get to like maybe get hurt. I got it. See, that's so weird. That's the trip I'm on. That's a, like I, I, and this is a really weird confession, but like I, you know, I do a little paranormal Karen series that you've been on, which by the way, that's still my favorite joke. When you said every picture is a selfie because we're all one. Oh, I love that joke. Um, so, uh, but I'm like, on that, I look at it and I know 
no one from TV is going to hire you if you don't brush your hair. You know, you know what I mean? Like, and I think I don't care, but then I go down the layers. Do I care? Yes, I care. Did I give up on something? Yes. Is this, and it goes down layer, layer, layer until it gets to, am I afraid to be attractive? Cause I might have to deal with falling in love with someone. Like it goes boom, boom, oh, boom, okay. boom, boom. You know what I mean? Like so you go from like a superficial level down to like, like the core of, is this really being afraid to uh, be accepted? Yeah. And it is. We don't have to solve that today. <laughs> but I don't know how we got on that. But well, no, I mean, I think that's the whole, I mean, everything, all the ugliness that you see in the world, for the most part, um, stems from insecurity. I think you yeah. could almost say all of it, even the war profiteering, because people are like trying to make as much money as they can. They don't care how, because they want to make sure they have money to protect themselves from who knows what, yeah. but or whatever's in their own mind. But, or their competition. Yeah, they it's have all to insecurity. somebody else. Yeah, it's all insecurity. Yeah. And everything stems from and like once, but it's so easy to know that it's difficult to remember it. Yeah. But uh, yeah. yeah, it's oof. this, this three years is going to be tough. And someone was just going like, well, I don't when did it start? I think it started 2018. The astrologer said, uh, the country's got to die. It's going to die of cancer with Hillary or it's going to die with a heart attack of Trump. And we chose the heart attack. There was like one way the system had to get knocked down to get built back up. And so I think after that, we're going to be okay. But it's also, I just think it's all, uh, we're so comfortable and we, we don't, we aren't aware of that. You know what I mean? Like mm. sometimes people call me and I'm like, Hey, you may not get the best job, but you have a job, you have a roof over your head and you got food. And that's, yeah. you know, we gotta, go, we gotta go. Sometimes the universe didn't give you that. We're real skewed in like what we think is like our level of what is fair. Right. Right. Uh, or just normal because like, we're like, oh, you haven't made it in this business uh, here in America unless you have your guest house or like your vacation right. home. Your vacation home? That's funny. What are you talking about? <laughs> my, my idea of success is being able to rent a guest house. <laughs> right? <laughs> but like some people are like, you know, like, I mean, I still have roommates. And, you know, some people will be like, ooh, you have roommates? Like you haven't. And I'm like, whose measuring stick are you using? Right. Um, I get to, I, I have designed my own measuring stick. Yeah. See that? I think that, especially in Hollywood. That's what we should sell that's, for merch. That's right. A measure your own measuring your stick, measuring and you stick. just get to write the things oh, yeah. you want on it. Um, there's this no is the correct size of a penis. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's almost, has a sliding scale. Yeah, it's, a yeah, it's a detractor. Whoop. It's a, but it's like we get to make our own. Yeah, we get to decide what is. But when you buy into other people's paradigms. That's when you become misery. That's yeah. when misery sets in. Like, oh, I don't have this because I'm supposed to have this. It's like, well, who said that? Right. And why did they tell you that? Plus, you know what else? There's a really strange thing. Like, you like other people's energy. Well, you know, and I mean, in a, in a way, like, you probably like to know, hey, there is someone else in the house. Or there is, you know what I mean? Sure. I get freaked out by it. I read this thing about how shamans, there are these different things that shamans do. And sometimes they, of course, you can just say anything weird and go, this is, I heard shamans do this. They sleep uh, next to a cliff sometimes or suspended from a tree because they said at night, your sort of your vibrational antlers go out and they trying to check what's in the room and they know the space of the room and what's going on. So if you go outside, could you sleep if those antlers have no, no wall, no wall? Or like no it's boundary. just, I don't think it could. I, I think, and I don't sleep well, too well with other people in the room. I kind of like my antlers are like, no, we need a dog in here and that's it. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I camped solo recently wow oh that's what i was gonna ask you about we got to do that before you camp solo how was that did you it was great you, for two nights okay? you were i scared. was like no i was terrified the first night i mean uh -huh. like there was it was there was moments where i was like there's the this. thinnest piece of plastic separates me from everything and then did you think about those russian people that were in the snow and i tried and not to out of there they went inside out yeah yeah i tried oh. not to think about that and yeah i tried not to i had this is the first time i'd camped since i Heard of David Polites or any of the missing 411 oh, books? Okay. Oh, where, yeah. Like all, it's just filled with those stories. See, of I the people know. who go missing in yeah. national parks and state parks. And like, um, but I was like, I got to. So I just went and did it. And, uh, you know, the second night was better. I mean, it was raining the second day and night pretty much the whole time. But, um, 
Yeah, but you know, the more you do it, the easier, you know, the more comfortable it probably becomes. And then in hindsight, I'm looking back and I'm like, oh, I mean, yeah, I was out in the middle of nowhere kind of, but there were other people like in the area. It's not the craziest. It's like I wasn't like totally off the grid, like, you know, grizzly man or something, you know, like. Right. So. As a woman, you, you think, oh, there's other people in the area. <laughs> like, yeah. who's going to Although me? during the storm night, I was in my tent and, uh, like a large branch from a tree fell and crashed into the ground very close to my tent. So that could have just, could have just landed on top of me and killed me. Oh. Um, but, uh, or my car, uh, but like it did not, luckily. That's like how horror story. So that was even scarier than like, yeah. cause once I, cause I, I was still kind of awake and I just heard, oh. like just hitting like this loud thud. Like, oh, that was a branch that weighed a couple hundred pounds. Wow. You know, that just landed. And, uh, that scared the hell out of me. Did anybody for a while. come and knock on your tent and ask no. for a cup of sugar? No, no. No, they don't do that. Either. No, they don't. <laughs> <laughs> but wow, they don't do that, that. but did you that's a rear, very that's a very brave. But total darkness. Right. Uh it's almost kind of like a visual deprivation tank. Wow. But you can still hear stuff, but But like, there's real danger. Sure. Unless the guy watching you in the tank. There's wild dies. animals. I mean, you could see I mean, you'd see deer walking around when you I took a hike in the day and you know, Where there's, was there's this? Animals. This was in Red Top Mountain State Park in Georgia. Oh, in Georgia. Halfway between Chattanooga and Atlanta. Wow. So close to Tennessee. Wow. So uh, now you told me about, when I was on your podcast, a place where you were going there to go ghost hunting and they left you alone. The Brackenfern Manor. That's in Lake Arrowhead. Okay. So right down the road from here. Okay. So you went there that you were I did not know that they were You didn't know they were going to leave you alone. There was a radio show that I was doing and I went a night early because the it's right across the street from where they do the radio show. This place called the Tudor House. Uh, it's like a dinner theater place. It's like a great restaurant but it's also got a stage. Um so the Tudor House is there, and then across the street, right directly across the street, is this place called the Brackenfern Manor. It's a bread and or a bed and breakfast, and uh, used to be owned by Bugsy Siegel. Used to be a brothel, and uh, used to like run booze out of there. I guess. Anyway, like my place. Yeah, and so <laughs> the you know it's like you come get some moonshine and a tarot reading over at your uh, right, <laughs> some white lightning. You can't use the tongue. Yeah, yeah, and uh, there's. So I get there, and the guy who's like in charge, I meet him, or who runs the plate, the caretaker, him and his uh, partner are the caretakers. And so I meet her too. And then he's telling me about the place, a brief history of it. And then I was like, oh, yeah, man, I'm excited. You know, my friend told me, you know, about his experience. Apparently, there's three ghosts there. And he goes, oh, yeah, you know, so we're talking a little bit. Then it's like four o'clock, five o'clock. It's still light, it's summertime. And he goes, uh, yeah, so, uh, you want to do an, inter- you wanted to do an interview with us, right? And I was like, yeah. And he's like, okay, we can do it tomorrow when we come back. And I was like, oh, okay. Uh, you don't stay here. It's like a bed and breakfast. <laughs> he's like, no, uh, no one will be here tonight. And I was like, I mean, but somebody will be here other than me. Like, this is like a business, right? Like, you don't just abandon them. Right. You're not just going to let me have the whole place to, like, like I could he's like, no, tickets. you're here. All alone. Oh. And I was just like, I, my, my stomach was just like, ugh. And so then he leaves. And I start getting a little more scared, a little more scared, a little more scared. My room's right next to the room that's got like the, the female ghost who was the prostitute who was, uh, who killed herself. Um, third floor, I'm on the second floor. The third floor has the handyman ghost who was thrown from a window for having an affair by the mobsters with one of the girls who work there. The first floor is a child ghost, kid ghost, who was like run over by an ice truck or an ice cart. Yeah, years, like the 20s or something, um, accidentally. But, but I, apparently he's mischievous. But you have to drag cart, right? Well, a horse. Oh, a horse, okay. And so... Otherwise, how, how slow is that kid yeah, to right? get out in front of a wheel? So but apparently he likes to like take your keys and hide them and stuff like that, right? Um, a mischievous kind of spirit so i start just getting i can't stay inside sun starts going down i'm just outside they had wi-fi 
So I'm just like watching baseball on my computer. Finally, the last baseball game is over. It's like 10 o'clock and I'm just like, I can't. Like this is, I can't be inside for more than five minutes. And so I go to 7-Eleven. I drive into this little town like 10 minutes away and just, I buy a couple packs of cigarettes. I'm like, I'm just going to stay on the porch all night and smoke. <laughs> and I hadn't smoked in years. Ah. And so next thing you know, I'm just out on this patio s- chain smoking. Now I'm a smoker again all of a sudden. And I'm just like so upset with myself that I'm doing this, but it's better than being inside. And then my body is like reacting against all the poison I'm now putting into myself. So I have to go to the bathroom and every room has its own tiny little bathroom. So I, I go sit on the toilet and like to the point where like your leg touches the wall and the window is right next to your face. Like wow. the bathrooms are that small. So I'm sitting there and all of a sudden I hear knocking. Sounds like right on the wall next to me. And I'm on the second floor and I'm freaking out. And then I hear like female laughter, female voices, laughter, and like f- kind of in the distance. And I'm just like, I mean, it literally scared the shit out of me in that moment. Uh, I <laughs> Thank mean, like, God you were in the right yeah, chair. Yeah, I yeah. was in the right, I was in the exact right spot. <laughs> like it scared, it scared me so badly. So finally I, I get out of there as quickly as possible and I just run outside. And it's pitch black because you're in the mountains. There's no light pollution. Um, I pop the trunk of my car because it's the only light. So I just have a light in my trunk and I'm just kind of like hanging out by my trunk staring at the things in my trunk. Like... Uh, just like looking at all the things, like just doing an inventory, just to like, I don't know what else to do. Clear your head. Yeah, and uh, and then a couple minutes later, all of a sudden, from behind me, I just hear, "Excuse me," a female voice. I turn around, and no more than maybe five to seven feet, it feels like, away from me, are these two young women, and I freak out. <laughs> I freak out, and I think I said something along the lines of, um, are you real? <laughs> you know, like, are you real? Please tell me you're real. And we're like, oh, my God, sorry, we didn't mean to sneak up on you. Because at this point, it's like midnight. I'm just going to yell that at everyone now when they know. Yeah, are you right real? <laughs> uh, and at this point, it's probably midnight, after midnight. And oh, and this place has nothing around it. There's no building. Very little. I mean, there's some homes and things, but, like, everybody's asleep or... And it's just, and there's not like a lot of like street lamps or lights, Uh you know, I mean, because it's very wooded too. So like there might be a little bit of light coming from different spots, but like it's everything's so wooded and thick that you don't really see anything. You can look up and you can almost see every star in the sky because it's that dark. So, so what did they want to ask you? So they, they quickly apologize for startling me. I realized they're real. (laughs) They're like, Oh my God, we're so sorry. We're looking, we're supposed to be staying at the Brackenfern Manor. And I was like, oh, this is, this is the Brackenfern Manor. And they're like, yeah, we were supposed to come in tomorrow, but we got here early. Oh God, that's a, and they, and you let them in, right? And uh, I'm like, oh my God. Okay. Yeah. Thank God. I've just, I'm like, I am staying at the Brackenfern Manor. I'm the only one in here. And I've gone, I've driven myself crazy. Cause I mean, there's a boy ghost. There's a, uh, there's okay, a whore no ghost. Are we there's get- an old man ghost. I'm like, like very, like, I'm like talking to them like a crazy person. So and, I'm like, Oh they- my God, thank God you're going to be here because I've been here by myself. Blah, 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 blah. And they wow. know about this. They're like, Oh yeah, we heard about the, we know about the ghost. And are they attractive? Or are we about to move into a porn movie? They are. Did- they seem attractive. It's so dark, but they the seem time, attractive. At the moment. Yeah. So, uh, they what go inside. The, well, they're, they're staying on the third floor. It turns out, as they walk by, I, I go into my room and I show them in, we talk for a couple minutes, not much. And, uh, I go into my room on the second floor. I'm like, oh, there's other people in the house now. I, that makes me feel better. Right. Always. Yeah. And they, they're in the room directly above me. And it's so, it's such an old place. It's got those vents that just go straight through. So, I mean, I can hear their whole conversation, essentially. Um, and anyway, some time passes. I'm still kind of going crazy a little bit. Go outside, smoke, come back in maybe. And then, it's like maybe one thirty, two in the morning. And all of a sudden I just start, I'm in my room and I just start hearing like the weirdest noise, like this, like low level, like, uh, uh, like this weird moaning noise. And I'm like, it's ghost sex. Like, it's just like, <laughs> I'm like, ter- I'm like, why? No, I don't want it. Please. Like I, I thought I was, I thought it was over this. And so I'm like, 
using the Wi-Fi to message my buddy Dave Waite. And I'm like, oh, my God, I'm going crazy, man. It's 2 in the morning. Like, there's these ghosts, you know, like having sex or something. There's women that are here now. Should I go up and ask them if they hear it? He goes, you're going crazy. Go up and talk to them see if they hear it. So I walk up these old winding wooden steps. And I get to the point where my head is above the floor of the uh, third floor. And so you can, I can kind of see, I'm just kind of looking at like the floor. Right. And then their room is right there. And the door's wide open uh, and lights coming out of the, okay. the room. And now the noises are very loud. Oh. It turns out it wasn't ghost sex. It was these two women <laughs> having sex. I'm telling you, this is a porn. Right. And then there's your little eyes at the level. And so I'm just kind of like, <laughs> oh my God, they're having sex with each other. In a way that is the loudest that I've ever heard. Like, to the point where, you know, when people go to hotels, they like, we're in a hotel. We're going to have sex. Crazy sex. Like, this was, like, beyond that. And their door was wide open. And so I'm like... It's very... Did you tell so them I'm this like, is very irresponsible in a car? So I didn't... I, I just kind of stopped right there once I realized it and, like, realized, oh, I... You know, oh, my man brain was like, oh, they, they, oh, you know, this is, you know, like a porn. Like I should, I should go. And another part of my brain was like, you know what? <laughs> Maybe you don't want to go to jail for like being a creep. So I'm like, you better just go back to the end of your room. This goes on for a couple hours, which was clear indication that they didn't want a man joining them. <laughs> right. So the, uh, it goes on, I mean, headboard banging, moaning, screaming. Are you sure they're real? I never considered that. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm like spooked. Um, I'm pretty sure they're real because the one girl said that she was the daughter. The one girl is the daughter of a guy. No, I saw him at breakfast the next okay. day. All right. um, the, this is how like... You know, it, it it goes from like, oh, this is a porn to like, these are just the the rudest people in the right. world. Right. There's a whole emotional. This is like because they're door. just like having the loudest sex for hours with their door wide open. The next day, they give tours of this place during the day. Her dad is the guy who gives tours. Oh. Uh, or one of the guys because he lives up there and like will give tours of this place because he's a historian of like the area. You didn't tell him what happened, did you? No, I didn't have to. Because it's like one in the afternoon, I hear him outside my door giving a tour. But I also hear them having sex with each other. Even though that you clearly know there's everybody in the place knows there's a tour happening. You can hear it because there's like a bunch of people talking, and you can hear them. Oh yeah, and this is blah 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 blah, and people are like, oh, this is interesting. Blah 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 blah. Oh, what about this ghost? Is there a blah 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 blah? And they so they know he's there, and they are still doing it. And now they're back again doing it. She is like having the craziest, loudest sex with her dad walking by the room, giving a tour to people. Like, I'm uncomfortable. Yeah. She's like, let's have sex real loud so my dad hears. Like, who does wow. that? Like, you know, right? So, like, they were just, they were just kind of, they were not kind of, they were just very rude, I, I think, when it came to like, you know, sure, have fun, enjoy yourself, have, all the sex you want. Maybe close your door. Yeah. Maybe, maybe it's don't like do it a, when your dad's right on the other side of the door. It's like second floor drummer. Right? Same yeah. thing. Yeah. Second floor yeah. drumming. And um, so it was, um, I did try playing chess with the boy ghost before the girl showed up. Oh, okay. I would move a piece. I moved a piece to see if he would move a piece and play. But that never happened. The weirdest thing that did happen other than me just being spooked out the whole time was I... Woke up the next day in my Zoom recorder. The memory card was full. Oh. And I had not really recorded that much. I was doing updates like I play, you know, I moved to a pond to see if the boy goes blah, 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 blah. I'm freaked out, blah, 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 stuff like that. But um, it was a, like a 16 gig memory card. And all of a sudden it was just full with wow. hours. So like, so it had like hours of recording that I didn't do on purpose wow. or know how. Ex I really don't know how. Um, you know That's what? A, I'm fascinated. I, I have to have you on again, but we have yeah, to we'll get, do yeah, we gotta get going. Dark. We gotta oh, go. Oh yeah, shoot. And you know what else? Uh, tell everyone your podcast and where they can find oh, you. Oh shit. Is Alex uh, outside? Oh shit. Oh yeah. Alex is. Okay. 
outside. He he texted me like twenty minutes ago. Tell him we'll be right there. Uh, you just tell people where to find you. Yeah, home. Ryan Singer Comedy uh, dot com. Rising on Instagram. Rising on Twitter. Uh, uh, and great. me and Paranormal You, the podcast. Me and Paranormal Okay, thanks. And you can go get Alex and hand me that. Okay, night. cool, cool. And then I'll cool. close out. Yeah, and, this is uh, fun. Awesome. And listen, and also, I tried to get us a gig at a place called the Sequoia that was very haunted, where we could have gone and then spent a night in a haunted hotel. If anyone has a venue that they know of where Ryan and I can do comedy oh, yes. and stay, and um, let us know. Send an email, any place like that that has shows or something. We'll come out and do ghost hunting, everything like that. Thanks for listening, everybody. Um, you can uh, please give me five stars or a good review or a lousy review, just some kind of review wherever you listen. And you can reach me at paranormalkaren.com or karenrontowski.com. You can book a reading there. Um, what else? Uh, oh, and you can become a sponsor of the show if you want. All that is good. Thanks to Mike at Uno Rising Media. Everybody have a great day. Thank you. People are always asking me, Karen, you are so knowledgeable about tarot, ghosts, and otherworldly spirits. How do you stay so organized and grounded here on Earth? And I have to tell them my secret weapon. It's black tourmaline. And Nita over at NitaApple.com. After years of complaining about all the text messages and emails back and forth, trying to schedule tarot readings and chasing after payments, Nita installed Acuity Scheduler on my website, and now I just get a little ding on my phone, and that tells me someone has made an appointment and the money is already in my account. I love that little ding, except every time it goes off, Courage runs to his food bowl. Five minutes with Nita can save you five hours of bumbling around and trying to do things yourself. So if you spend 10 minutes with her, that'll save you like 72 hours or something like that. I don't know. I'm not good with math, but you know who is? Nita. That's who I would ask. Want to end all the emails back and forth and get paid up front when clients schedule time with you? Then hop on over to nitaapple.com backslash services and let Nita get you set up with a simple system that will make your life so much easier. Use coupon code boo for you and get 20% off any products or services. She's got a lot of services and products that can save you time and money. That's boo for you all lowercase b o o the number 4 the letter u and get 20% off. That's Nita Apple at nitaapple.com backslash services. N-I-T-A-A-P-P-L-E dot com backslash services and make your life easier today. Mm-hmm.